in episode number 300 of the Reasons I'm Broke podcast. We cover my buddy, my best friend, Jeff Johns. DC Entertainment position has changed for my friend, and we've got some information and some inside sources. Being myself, we're going to talk about that tonight. <laughs> we also have the very first movie steals for the new Wonder Woman and Aquaman movie, courtesy of Daniel. I'm sure you sent that over from your movie. A couple of selfies here and there. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest video game event of the year is, of course, E3, and we're covering E3 2018. All of this and so much more on today's show. Hello and welcome to the 300th episode of the Reasons I'm Broke podcast, bringing you the reasons we're broke every single week for over five years, Woo! ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and more. I am Darth Vay Daniel. And I am Emperor Papa Clank. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to cover the <laughs> feeling that is episode 300 later on mm -hmm. near the end of the show. But if you're just joining us, you tuned in, you missed out on 299 episodes, but that's all right. You're jumping <laughs> right on to what is essentially like an issue one or an issue zero Ooh. of the Reasons I'm Broke podcast. So welcome to the show. The way we format it first, we'll go, we'll go over some news. Then we'll head into our Brokehead block, which is kind of the background of what's been going on with Palpa Kelly and I throughout the week. We'll head into our Patreon shoutouts, which are the people that make the show possible. And normally we do a comic book highlight of the week. That's how we'll close it out or an interview. But in this week, we're going to go ahead and talk about episode 300. We've got some great clips to share with mm -hmm. all of you. So let's jump Jump right into our news for this episode. Our very first news has to do with comic books. The Magic Order writer Mark Miller has expanded his thoughts on the series having only a single printing. We have first printings of Ooh. the Magic Order number one. <laughs> I got the Adam Hughes variant because uh -huh. I love Adam, Adam Hughes. Adam Hughes is great. I had also picked up the Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man Adam Hughes variant, which was originally like a comic explosion, I think is the name of the retailer. Uh, exclusive and whenever they have extras they put them on dynamic forces and it, it shows up in the previews catalog so that was actually a gamble i took because i'm like all right can i should i get it now at the price that they have it exclusively through the website or i can wait and get it a little cheaper through the previews catalog because dynamic forces normally bumps it down some mm -hmm. when it shows up there because they're trying to move them too of course so that's what i waited for and it paid off and i got the adam hughes uh gwen stacy cover for peter parker spectacular spider-man and we also got the magic order which does that interest you at all just the fact that it's mark miller is that like your brian k vaughn now slowly <laughs> i wouldn't even say slowly brian k vaughn is still the top Mm -hmm. He's he's just barely under Dustin Wynn. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Paul Dini fit into this? He's there too. <laughs> they're just they're they're like a gang. <laughs> <laughs> the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> but I do like Mark Miller. I will read this. It sounds interesting. I will read it with all the time that I have, <laughs> which is not a lot. But when I have the opportunity, I would really like to read this. I find it very interesting, though, that they're only doing a single printing of this book. Yeah, he did have a quote on why they're doing single printings only. And he said, in the past, we've always gone back for second, third and fourth printings. But we love the idea of making this as collectible as possible and literally doing no more printings after it sells out on Wednesday. I love the idea of scarcity here and making these a must buy. So it's going to be a fun week and I'm curious what these will move at on eBay by Wednesday night, end quote. So I like Mark Miller. He he puts forth some good things, but cocky much, really? When they sell out on Wednesday, <laughs> they didn't sell out them, by the way. <laughs> let's see them up on eBay on Wednesday night. <laughs> Calm down, Mark. <laughs> Is he allowed to brag though? Because now he's sold all of his creations, including future creations, no. to Netflix. He's done for life. Yeah, yeah, okay. He's got all this money. You still can't brag about it because then people like me go, uh, <laughs> Mark, really? Have you flipped to the back of issue one of um, the Magic Order? No, I have. Do we have that book yet? <laughs> We do. It's in. It's on our table. Oh, okay. So it is a black background, mm -hmm. and then the red Netflix logo plastered, and nothing else. It's just a of Netflix course. logo. When you open the page, it goes dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> 
in the very back of the comic, he does do like a little, I think they're called forwards or the letters uh-huh. pages. Yeah. And he says that this is the first comic that is releasing after his Netflix deal. And uh, he says, imagine all of these books moving forward being adapted to television, Mm -hmm. whereas in the past he's tried to make them into movies. So one day we may get the magic order as a Netflix television show. And you can even tell by the way it's written, it is written for television. You read this comic and it is very cinematic. I will say as a collector... I don't, I mean, it's kind of cool that they're doing single printing because if they become TV shows now, it's worth that much more. Okay, that's cool. But still, cocky much? (laughs) You know how he really got them? Oh, no. So the first issue, first printing, you think, okay, this is the first appearance of a lot of these characters Mm -hmm. that are eventually going to show up on TV. Well, at a separate convention months ago, they released like an advanced copy of this. So technically, that's all of these characters' first appearances. So that's the one that's going for money. Right. However, this one is still a a good book to have. Kind of like Watchmen number one isn't actually the first appearance of Manhattan and all of them. Their first appearance was in an, a DC book in like a an advertisement place. Like, and this is what's coming later. And it's got the little portrait of all four of them or whatever. All five of them. And it's got, it's like, that's the first appearance of Watchmen. It's like, damn it. So you, even if you if you own Watchmen number one, that's worth a little bit less than. Right. So for right. the speculators out there. <laughs> that's, that's the one thing I do find funny though. People that only bought this because they think this is going to be the first appearance of these characters. Surprise, they were all tricked. bitches. And it's like the true, the people that are buying this to read it. And it's a like, great. And it's a collectible as well. I love it. That's great. But people that are just speculating, I do not feel any fucking remorse. (laughs) Did you read the first issue? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was really good. Good. It was awesome. It is a dark Harry Potter type of story. Cool. Is there a love story? No, but there Uh, is a heartbreak. The character that that we're following is a damaged character, and it's all based on on his family. So you'll read it. I think Mm. you'll you'll catch on and sympathize with him. Mm. Were you listening to Danity Kang, why why he was doing his thing? (laughs) I wasn't. Damage, damage, (laughs) damage, damage. My family broke my heart, and now I'm damaged. (laughs) (laughs) So here's something that'll pick you up, especially. So Amazon Studios... (laughs) is in talks with Warner Brothers to pick up the canceled Lucifer series for a new season according to Deadline. I'm so happy. <laughs> we don't even like Amazon, but I'm happy. <laughs> you they can borrow your dad's login. Everything. <laughs> no, because then my parents will see I'm watching a show called Lucifer. <laughs> well, maybe they might be. I don't know. Maybe they'll like it. Who knows? No. Well, then you're not watching My Lucifer. mom doesn't even want to watch Coco. Really? Yeah. Because of the dead characters? Yeah, it scares her. Gotcha. The Aztecs? I was like, Mom, but it's so good. <laughs> Mama Coco. No, I'm so excited that somebody is picking up Lucifer. Because even if maybe it only goes on Amazon and then I can buy it on DVD later. Yeah, there you go. Maybe I can wait for the whole season to come out and just do a 30-day free trial and binge Lucifer. <laughs> and then when the next season comes out, I use your 30-day free trial. <laughs> Have you seen that meme that it's it says me using different names for free trials or something. It shows the same person, but with like a different costume every day. (laughs) So funny. That's pretty good. (laughs) So this isn't the first time actually that Amazon has saved a TV show. Earlier this year, Amazon Studios picked up The Expanse following its cancellation on sci-fi. People still watch sci-fi? Sifi? I'm sure someone does. (laughs) Someone somewhere. That's almost as bad of a name change as IHOB. Yeah, that I didn't believe you. I still thought it was like some weird April Fool's thing or some promotion. When nope. IHOP said that they were doing that, I'm like, all right, well, it's they're going to expand their... I thought it was like a bacon fest thing. Like maybe they're going to do a month of it. And mm-hmm. It's like International House of Bacon. It's like, all right, I get it. But instead it's burgers. And even then I'm like, all right, so they're introducing a line of new burgers. But they're just... This is a promotion that, you know, IHOP for the next three months... But I guess they are legitimately changing their name. And I looked on Twitter and at IHOP on the thing. They removed all of their backgrounds. They removed the icons. And it says, you're actually looking for at IHOB. And that's when it's like, oh, shit. They did actually change their Mm -hmm. their fucking corporate name. And and you want to know what? Nobody's going there for burgers. They're not. It's such a weird marketing move. And I understand that they're trying to catch that market. They're trying. They've always been, because I used to work at IHOP, actually. And they always tried to push the, this is what all these restaurants, at every single restaurant I've served at, they've tried to push the thing that it that is not their specialty. And I understand right. why, because they want to expand the mm. the marketing or the, the menu to sell to more people. 
But I think you should instead focus on what you're good at and expand the breakfast options or make the breakfast options better. When I worked at Steak and Shake, they pushed so hard for breakfast at Steak and Shake. Like, so fucking hard. Nobody goes to Steak and Shake for breakfast. Senior citizens did. Okay, well... (laughs) And uh, very few of them at that. Yeah. But we had to change our little menus out and do the breakfast. And, and it wasn't, it was, I'm like, why are we, it's known for shakes and burgers. Like, mm-hmm. let's, let's do that. And it was incredibly dumb. And I think, I don't think the International House of Burgers is going to work out. No. Uh, their food was never. Yeah, I hop is so much worse to say than I hop. Yeah. <laughs> If they have like a veggie burger, maybe I'll give it a try because they're they're expanded foods. When I did eat, like when I worked there, it's like I got tired of breakfast every day, so I would try like at Who the time gets like tired the, of breakfast every day. When you work at IHOP, absolutely. Ugh. And uh, so I tried all the different sandwiches that they had, and they weren't bad. Some of them were, you know, they weren't good with their chili. Uh, what is it? The Philly cheesesteaks, mm-hmm. fucking awful. <laughs> but the regular sandwiches right. and burgers were actually pretty good. So if they do have a veggie burger, I'll definitely give it a shot. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> what, what was this about sci-fi? Changing <laughs> yes. their name? <laughs> I ran down a rabbit hole <laughs> for our new broquettes. They're like, wow, they just go off on tangents that everybody else is like, ah, yep. Uh, rabbit trail, thank I'm you, sorry. according to Paul Pekeli. <laughs> 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 I think Krypton is actually on sci-fi. So there's some DC people watching that. I'll watch it eventually. Who's, who's watching Krypton? I heard it's really good. Really? I actually heard it's pretty good. So I huh. I know that the Brainiac thing, we talked about how Brainiac's makeup looked fucking amazing mm-hmm. and spot on. So it's like, even for that, you want to check out the show. And it's good to hear that every everyone's minds kind of changed after the fucking show came out. Whereas before, they were saying, well, we know what happens at the end. Like, why would they even make this? <laughs> and then the show came out and it's like, oh, the show's pretty good. It's like, hey, how about that? They made a fucking good show in spite of the fact that it's like, oh, I know. It's, it's like Gotham. It was the same shit. <laughs> That's the fucking stupidest. I know what happened. So why does it matter? Yeah. Have you ever seen like any historical movie? Because we all know what happens in all of those. <laughs> Like, shit. <laughs> People said that with Rogue One, too. Right before it came out, it's like, we know they're all going to die, and they, you know, they got to send the plans out, and it's like, yeah, but Star Wars fans want to see that right. happen. Right. You, you still, it, it's about the story. Like, yes, that's the ending to it, but you still, if they tell a compelling story, what's going to happen in Jurassic Park? All the dinosaurs are going to get free. Do we still fucking watch it? Yeah, we do, and we eat it up like, yum, 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 yum. What happens every week on the Batman comics? Oh, he saves a day and he wins. Great. I love that. I want to see love how it. he does that. <laughs> but I know how it ends, so I don't want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing on DC's side, according to the DC community manager, Danny Snow, the DC Universe streaming service will launch in August and will include the back catalog of animated shows and movies. Is that everything? Does that mean everything? I think that means everything. That, that's everything. That'd be Batman the Animated Series, what? Superman the Animated what? Series, Justice what? League, Batman what? Beyond, what? Static, what? maybe Static Shock. <laughs> and every DC animated movie, which is the one thing that everyone kind of agrees on, like, well, DC does animated movies well. And it's like, they do. I agree. And all of those have also been really good. I died. That was too perfect. I can't. That can't. There's nothing more we can do. This podcast is over. We're done. <laughs> that is amazing that's what we hoped for we talked about it for a while that that is how you would sell at least us on it that's how you're going to sell people and absolutely i'm all in but they don't just have the backlog of stuff which is in and of itself amazing and if you haven't seen these things why are you even listening to us go watch batman the animated series because that is all you need in life all you need except for us you need us too <laughs> and the, yeah the podcast <laughs> it goes hand in hand we love batman right? the animated series <laughs> But DC Universe also has announced four live action shows that are in development. As we talked about several weeks ago, we have Swamp Thing, which we were not expecting, Titans, Doom Patrol, and Metropolis. We also have two animated shows that are going to be exclusive to the streaming app, including Young Justice Outsiders and Harley Quinn. You know what else I heard about? And I don't know if this was an April Fool's for me too, but apparently if Teen Titans Go does well in theaters, there's they're going to bring back a fifth season of the original Teen Titans? I heard that was already happening, though. Well, what? The, the Teen Titans Go movie has nothing to do with how, if they bring back the original show. They already announced that there's going to be a fifth season to that Teen awesome. Titans show. But from what I understand, it is it is going to be exclusive to the streaming app as well. It should be. Well, now they've just sold that to everyone. Exactly right. These other people. Oh, fucking brilliant. 
older audience members that now have more expendable income mm-hmm. can that's another reason to get the DC streaming app and then you keep Teen Titans Go on Cartoon Network because that's where it's having enormous success. Right. Well, you could put it on the streaming app too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would play yeah, it on for both. Leo. What if they brought back Green Lantern the animated series season 2? I would love that. It's never going to happen though. <laughs> I would absolutely that, I want that more than Young Justice or you Teen do. Titans. I know you do. I, I still want those other two things more. Sorry. <laughs> but at least you're getting your Batman the Animated Series on there. Yeah. Do you think they'll censor anything? No, I don't think so. Okay, good. I don't think so. Especially since they did that Tom and Jerry Blu-ray DVD that I got <laughs> where they didn't censor anything. Like, I, they're where not they going to censor. they said, this was a product of its time. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, perfect. Just put up that warning and let's watch this. <laughs> let's not show that to our son anytime soon. <laughs> well, I'm going to show that to him. No. <laughs> oh, not any time soon. I don't want him to see movies and things where they're just beating each other senselessly with things he can find in our home. Fair enough. It's all right. No itchy and scratchy for him. No. <laughs> Here's a more personal story heading your way. DC Entertainment publisher Jim Lee has been named the new chief creative officer after Jeff John's departure. So Jim Lee has been with DC for 20 years now, ever since the company purchased his indie comic company called Wildstorm. And that's when they essentially bought him as well and made him an exclusive member Mm -hmm. of DC Comics and Warner Brothers. And what amazing things he's done with them. Since then, exactly. We, I mean, we just every time he comes out with a cover at the comic shop, it sells out. It's It's like I can't order enough of the things. And uh, this is this is just more good news for DC continuing their partnership with Jim Lee. Him getting the promotion. I'm curious to see what direction the comics are going to go in now. I don't know if what kind of I haven't seen enough panels with Jim Lee to know where he sits on all of the different characters on the direction that they should go on what his focus is Mm -hmm. whether it's newer characters or old ones if i had to guess it is the newer ones because he has had a hand in designing and redesigning so many costumes new costumes and new characters so i don't know if that's where we're going to go from here or if he's going to keep the ship going in the right direction which is i think more or less where they're going with in the comics world i really feel like he's going to keep it going in the positive direction. Like you said, he's been with DC for 20 years. That's plenty of time to really get a pulse of what the fans want, to really understand what's selling, what's not selling, what we want to see more of, and continue to go in those directions. And And I don't foresee him saying, well, let's do something completely different because it's what I want to do. Obviously, they chose him for this position because they had a faith in him and believed he could do the role. And I have faith in him, too. Plus, he's worked really closely with Jeff Johns as it is and Dandy Dio. Mm-hmm. So I think they're they're all on the same page as far as what DC Comics should be. Let me ask you this, and it kind of ties into the next news that we're going to talk about, which is what the change is for Jeff Johns. Do you think, because like you said, Jim Lee worked closely with Jeff Johns, that Jeff Johns was in a sense a placeholder while Jim Lee learned maybe more than, you know, gained more knowledge than he previously had about the particular workings of this job, and then they kind of shuffled them along. Kind of like grooming him for the position? Yeah. I don't think that was the intention, but uh, because the direction that the films went in as far as Justice League, Joe Whedon's Justice League being the lowest grossing of the DCEU (laughs) movies, I think that's when heads really started to roll. Like Diane Nelson stepped down from DC Entertainment as well. And se- they lost several positions mm-hmm. from when the DC Films division of Warner Brothers, and that also included Jeff John. So I don't think it was their intent ever, but it does help that Jim Lee was there in case, you know, a contract renewal with Jeff didn't go through. Right. And they still had that next person. And I'm sure someone else is now, you know, taking over Jim Lee's position or at least being groomed for that mm. in case something changes. Dustin Wynn. Dustin should get that. <laughs> Dustin. Dustin should just have everything. <laughs> <laughs> so as we said earlier, my buddy Jeff, best friend, mm-hmm. BFFs, has stepped down as president of DC Entertainment, but is going to remain with DC and Warner Brothers through an exclusive contract. I didn't even have to convince the guy. No, he just, he was like, yep, here we go. So with this larger role as primarily a writer, Johns has launched a DC comic imprint called, quote, The Killing Zone end quote, which will feature comics focused on lesser DC characters. What do you think of that idea? 
it's if it's going to focus on lesser characters, it worked with Mr. Miracle, right? Mm-hmm. Because it had this big one. It was a great story. It had this bigger writer, Tom King. If Jeff Johns writes these lesser characters, will that will it have the same success? I think absolutely. And I haven't been reading comics as long as you have, but how many people really read about Sinestro and the Green Lanterns? I mean, I know Hal Jordan's always been pretty big, but how much bigger did he make the Green Lanterns? Huge. He, Huge. he made them fucking. He kept DC afloat for many years on his Green Lantern run alone. Right, exactly. So imagine what he can do with characters that are essentially a blank slate. With Green Lantern, you're writing and you already have a pretty established audience who says, yes, this is my Hal Jordan, this is my Jon Stewart, etc., etc., etc. Now he has free reign. Pick a character nobody's thought about in the last 10, 15 years and do what you want. Now that he's focusing as well as just being a writer, I think that's kind of where he needs to be, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, sure. Do do Just let him do what he wants. Just... <laughs> They sh- they're doing what IHOB should have done <laughs> and not changed the name. And said they're, you know, Jeff Johns is back to what right. he needs to do and mm-hmm. probably what he likes to do as well. Jeff Johns, with this kind of contract renewal, with the change in position, he went ahead and gave ev- gave everyone a, a real breakdown of what's coming out from him in the future and from DC Comics. He did say he will be writing a solo Shazam book. As continued from his new 52 rendition of the character starting this fall. Yes. Perfect timing with the new Shazam movie coming out. Which is based on his run. Exactly. So get more content out there. Get people excited. Get them reading that book. Now you're going to pull more people in the theaters. And now you have people coming from the theaters to pick up that book. Boom. Done. Exactly. That book. That one issue. And then they won't return next month. (laughs) You're going to sell that one issue at least. (laughs) Would you rather them ne- never step foot in your comic shop? Maybe they step in and they get that one issue and they don't like it and so they don't pick it up, which is blasphemy, <laughs> and then they come back in for something else. I'm just being old and bitter. All right. <laughs> he will also be writing a miniseries titled The Three Jokers with art from Jason Fabok. Hmm. I wonder what that's about. <laughs> Three the, Jokers. The fucking story that they've kept asking about. All these fans keep tweeting him like, oh yeah, but what about The Three Jokers? And... It's like, fair enough. We haven't seen a hint of it since probably before Doomsday Clock. And now we're we're definitely getting the answer with this miniseries. I fucking forgot about him. So, whatever. Do you even care anymore? No. I you- probably will when it comes out. I'll be like, oh, yeah, it's about time they gave us this story. <laughs> <laughs> now, how serious do you think it is? The three Jokers. Do you think there are three little Jokers, like one based on the 60s? one based on probably the 90s or the Neil Adams version, and then maybe one modern one. Uh, Maybe there has been three different people that have taken on this persona, or maybe even the character himself, as hinted in by Scott Snyder's Batman run, has been taking that Dionysium and keeping himself young and changing the way he goes after Batman and Gotham throughout the years. Or will it be one Joker and then like, the comedian and so you know like a non-actual joker that would be pretty badass i didn't even think about that like yeah go ahead and tie in watchman fuck it yeah it's the comedian <laughs> and the joker and shit no i think i don't think it's because if it's him taking that dialithium or whatever <laughs> you called it through all the years then i mean batman would have to be around through all the years mm-hmm. unless you're then tying in batman's cloning machine but that doesn't make sense because the understanding is that the current Batman is the one who's the first Batman. Correct. Who began it all. Yeah. So that to me doesn't really make sense that it started all the way back then in the 60s and continued forward. What I could possibly see happening is it's one Joker, but because he's so fucking crazy, he's got like three different personalities. So he essentially reinvents himself in all these different times and maybe him getting near the brink of death or we think he's dead causes that switch to happen. And then he switches into something else. Because he failed in that instance. Right. And so his brain's like, nope, this didn't fucking work. Let's try again. That I could see happening more so than actually three different people or one person alive for all this time. I do like the idea that his insanity and brain switch, if that's the case, I would then have to question the Mobius chair. Like, So the Mobius chair told them that there's more than one Joker, but it even tricked the chair as well into thinking like, actually, he's got three personalities, Batman. (laughs) I mean, if... It, or three personalities, not three different people? I don't think so. It's still the same person. He's just got three personalities. It's the same body. Yeah, same same but, person. But what makes a person? 
Their body. <laughs> <laughs> is it their body or is it their mind? <laughs> it is their mind. Okay, it is their then. mind. Absolutely. Just like when people have like uh, the brain surgery mm-hmm. where due to an illness or whatever, they used to do the lobotomies, completely changes their personality 100% where it was a complete 360. They went from being miserable to being happy all the time or vice versa, where some of them even went from being religious to non, like just complete different mm-hmm. type of... Uh, so that could be... Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a mind thing. But I'm curious to see how he's going to write in this Three Jokers uh, this mini-series. And with J- Jason Fabok on board, you know the book's going to be gorgeous. Warner Brothers will also continue to work with Jeff on the film side through his new film production banner, Mad Ghost Productions. So in this new position, and Jeff and I talked about it months ago, mm-hmm. so I, it's <laughs> more information that I really wanted to share with you guys, but I don't want, I don't want to risk not my relationship or friendship with Jeff because that's rock that's solid. That's never going to go away. It's never yeah. going to change. But instead, like all of these different news stories and bloggers, and they're going to call me a liar, and I just don't want to deal with all mm-hmm. of the, the... Of course not the benefits the backlash, that would come yeah. from this and the yeah, yeah. the backlash as well. But now we can actually let you guys know because, you know, he and I have discussed it and then now we know the information is out there. In the new position, Jeff will executive produce and write a Green Lantern core film starring Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, our favorite Green Lantern, as based on his nine-year Green Lantern comic book run. That's what you fucking adapt. What kind of world are we living in? How can this world get any more perfect we're gonna get sinestro who was initially a green lantern kind of like we got in the green lantern movie can he be a handsome sinestro again with a normal size forehead <laughs> yes he needs to be <laughs> is a forehead called the forehead because it's four fingers no i think it's the forefront of your body mm-hmm. but yeah we do need to have a handsome sinestro yes. again because we've had one already mm-hmm. We need to have the Yellow Lantern core, Blackest Night. Yes. Uh, we have to have the New 52, Jeff Jan- the Green Lantern run. Yes. Do every single one of those arcs, War of the Green Lanterns, every single one, Green Lantern Rebirth. That should be the title of it. If you don't want to call it Green Lantern core, call it Green Lantern Rebirth. And that's what, what you do with the film and mm-hmm. you throw it out there. It sounds It's definitely a reboot. But you also have Hal Jordan, which brings in the older readers. Right. That grew up with Hal in their comics. And then you have Jon Stewart, Fuck yes. which aims at us, which mm-hmm. we grew up on the cartoon. Mm-hmm. So all of this is, that's how you do it. You do a buddy cop film. And we knew this was coming already, but this was already a script that David Goyer had been working on with Jeff Johns. And they had been coordinating together. But it sounds like now he's really refining the script even more himself to fit into this new division of movies that has definitely changed since we last heard of that Green Lantern film. And you know it's going to be fucking badass. Like, it can't not be amazing unless they cgi muscle suits on them again <laughs> i did not they're not gonna do that <laughs> i can tell you for sure they're not going to all right <laughs> what arc should they start with should they start with rebirth or should they go straight into the sinestro core war which is what i fucking want to see on the big screen i don't even know i really like the volthoom run that i don't remember which one that one was but that was my favorite story. But I haven't read as many Green Lantern stories as you have. I think the Sinestro Core War would pull in a lot of people mm-hmm. because that's, I mean, Hal Jordan and Sinestro. That's what you associate the most. I mean, even yeah. people from way back then, you watched the little the Justice Friends or whatever they were <laughs> Super called. Super Friends. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and you had the two of them fighting. So all the way back from there, people are going to associate with that and go see this movie. So... That's kind of the way you should probably go. Did you notice that in the Justice League comic? Have you read it? Justice League 1 yet? Yes. They put Sinestro back in his Super Friends or older (laughs) costume from the comics. I didn't notice that. So he doesn't, he's not yellow, which I was like disappointed at. I wanted the Sinestro core Sinestro. You you didn't like his his blue, like Like purple thing? Thing, yeah. It's fine, but that doesn't, why would he wear that now? He's a Sinestro core member. Maybe they called him like and he was taking a nap. He was in his pajamas. He's definitely in the, the Doom, Legion of Doom. And he's there, like, lined up with the rest of the villains, Cheetah, okay. Joker. Would you rather he just not be in there at all? <laughs> or in his galaxy pants again, maybe? Yes, the fucking galaxy <laughs> pants. So my buddy will also be writing and producing Wonder Woman 2, which is already filming. We've got a trailer probably popping up late this year, mm-hmm. if not early next year. We do have a few quotes 
here. I'm going to try and read them. You like to put a lot of difficult things for me to read. And you new brokettes, this is just what he does to me. He <laughs> likes to watch me fail <laughs> in it's, my reading. It's still not, as I told Julian and Lazy Gaming Guys on their stream, it's not as bad as Julian's when he had the script here. Mm -hmm. And we, it must have been like five Julian size as he tried to read a quote. <laughs> <sighs> so our first quote here comes from Toby Emmerich, who is the chairman of Warner Brothers Pictures Group. Who said, quote, Jeff is a super talented writer and truly embedded in the DC universe and its characters. We're thrilled that he's returning to his passion and his roots as a writer and producer. And it's even better that he's staying in our Warner Brothers family. We look forward to working with him on Green Lantern and other projects moving forward, end quote. And the next quote comes from both co-publishers Dan DiDio and Jim Lee, as they said... Jeff is one of DC Comics' most prolific writers, and we can't wait to see what he does next now that he will be dedicating 100% of his time to telling the best DC stories possible across all media, end quote. 100% or 99% of his time? Because the other 1% is spent, like, hanging out with you, I right? I mean, we do hang out at least 1% of his life. All right. Perfect. <laughs> and our final quote comes from John himself, who explains quote i took a role at dc entertainment because i love the characters and this universe more than anything but i want to spend my days writing and on set i'm thrilled to get back to a more hands-on creative role end quote this will give us more time to hang out though yeah like, honestly <laughs> like on the set of your movies and yeah i mean he's gonna be on the set of aquaman 2 less now mm. nowadays but i'll still invite him on like just come on in even just if he's not on, really overlooking out. it just yeah you know, we'll, we'll we'll get our assistants to get us our coffees and just hang out in those chairs. I'll still have a little chair for them, like one of those star chairs. Uh -huh. I still don't know what they're called, even though I've done, what, three, four, five movies already? Are they just like canvas chairs? They're Yes, they're ca fine. <laughs> they're canvas. I don't know. They, what they really are they are. called? Yeah, they're pretty director's much like chairs? director's chairs. I think they're just called director's chairs. They're light. They're, they're cheap. <laughs> they're, <laughs> but they've got our names on the back. Yes. D did you write his like with Sharpie because they threw his away and you're like, no, no, no. So I dug it like, back up. <laughs> you stole somebody else's. <laughs> Brought it straight out of the bin. Demanded at you. that shit. <laughs> it's my friend. I'm not going to let that shit happen. I'm not going to let them treat him like this. You can't. Of course not. If Jeff walks out of Warner Brothers, I walk out of Warner Brothers and you have no, just like the crow, that let the crow be a lesson. You'll have no Aquaman. Not just in the movies. <laughs> your comics, Aquaman will also suffer. Because people now read Aquaman and imagine... Like my version of Aquaman swimming through the comics. Yes, just like is, that we, what, is that what happens? That's exactly what happens. And just like we imagine Kevin Conroy's voice when we read Batman in mm. the comics. It's the exact same thing. Can can we do a giveaway where we take an Aquaman comic and just tape your face over all the Aquamans in it? It's not a bad idea. It's It, it would be definitely fucking time consuming getting all the right poses. But I think it's worth it. That's a super limited comic right there. Yeah. There'd only be one in existence. So many hours. I'm going to use regular <laughs> tape or glue stick that'll like bleed through the paper so many And turn curl it. over time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like those magazine projects we used to have in elementary school. <laughs> Where you had to cut out pieces of magazines yep. and tape them. And then did you ever like cut out the letters to spell something when it would have been way fucking faster just to write it? No. Oh man, I cut out each individual letter and like <laughs> got creative. Taped it. Sure did. In spite of everything that Jeff has told me and what he's tweeted out, what Jim and Dan as well have put out on Twitter and in statements, do you think this is at least some kind of a blow to Jeff Johns as like, you know, do you think he was unfairly moved out of this position or pressured out of it? I don't think so. I think at the end of the day, this is probably really what he wants. He's a writer at heart and that's what he wants to be doing. And even though he could handle the role... As I've seen with other people I've been close to who have put in been put into higher positions, even though you can handle it, if that's not what you really want to do, it's more taxing on you than than um, you know just doing what you want to do. So, like we said, he is a writer at the end of the day. That's what he enjoys to do. He even said his quote: "He wants to spend his days writing and being on set." Mm -hmm. And if you can find a job where you can just do your passion, that's great. The other side of it where he was, you know, extra responsible for all these things. And that was probably very stressful for him. Mm -hmm. It's going to be stressful for anybody. 
But again, if that's not what he wants to do, if he's trying to fit in writing around there, I'm sure writing is relaxing for him. It's, it's, I can't even think of the right words, but that's his hobby. That's his passion. And if he can't do that and now he has all these other stressful things, that's not conducive for his life or, or good life at that point. So while I enjoyed him being in that position, for him to do this, I mean, it's still a great job. He has probably more control than he had the other way. And he gets to do what he loves to do. I do want to say once again and remind the DC following that we have gained over the years, a lot of like the DCEU followings, because I follow several of them and I retweet them and in turn, you know, they'll give us support. Mm -hmm. But if you were one of those accounts that was demanding for Jeff Johns to step down as one of the many firings in Warner Brothers, fuck yourself, shame on you, because Jeff is not even solely at all responsible mm -hmm. for what you deem as Justice League, which, yes, it is Joey's jo Justice League, and I will agree with you there, but it is not John's responsibility. You can't fucking blame Jeff for what Joey Whedon did to the DC Universe, to what for what Warner Brothers did to the DC Universe in the films for kicking off Zack Snyder. Now he's, his next project's not a DC movie. Mm. So you can't blame that on Jeff. And if you demanded this to happen and you're glad that it happened solely because of what Justice League is, fuck yourself and fuck you. This got real heavy real fast. I, I speak the truth. Like, even though I, I will alienate these fellow DC fans, like, you, you know, if, if that's not sensible... It is sensible to blame Joey. <laughs> it is sensible <laughs> to do that. <laughs> he was there directing. Mm -hmm. Somehow ruined the entire movie with all of these crazy edits that they've done, which is definitely, you can find that evidence on YouTube. You can see the differences in the trailers ever since Joey Whedon and Warner Brothers asked for these changes. That makes sense. Not blaming Jeff Johns. That's, that's ridiculous. Jeff is listening like, oh, my friend. <laughs> my friendship is growing stronger. <laughs> 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 Moving on to some lighter topics. I'm his still... <laughs> lantern. I'm his lantern. <laughs> and brightest day and blackest night. No critic shall destroy our friendship. I don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> our friendship is magic, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so the first stills from the Warner Brothers sequel, Wonder Woman 1984, have released showing the return of <gasps> Steve Trevor. But, but he fucking died. But he died. Did, what? did they forget that he died? That's ridiculous. They forgot. They did, did they not watch Wonder Woman Maybe 1? Maybe she's hallucinating. I don't know. They don't, they don't know what they're doing over no. there. No. What are they even doing? <laughs> Patty Jenkins is returning as director. Of course she is. And will be co-writing uh, the script alongside, as we mentioned, my BFF. It's already a perfect movie. It's going to be good. Yeah. This movie is set to release November 1st, 2019. But they forgot that Steve Trevor died. <laughs> they forgot. Fucking internet. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not in the same continuity, but then I don't want to see it because it has to be in the same continuity. They just can't goddamn wait. They just... Until the fucking movie comes out. Watch it and see why Steve Trevor is in the fucking movie. But I already know fucking what idiots. happens. Why would I watch it? <laughs> yeah, because then when they fucking tell you. That's the other thing that the bloggers were also saying is... They were shitting on Justice League's marketing because they didn't put Superman anywhere in the movie, even though we knew that he was going to return in the film. But then when they reveal Steve Trevor, they're like, that would have been a big twist on the movie if we saw Steve Trevor in it. Why have you revealed him? It's like, what do you fucking want? Once again, but, but it's because they want to shit on whatever the fuck the DCEU does, even if they want it, even if they didn't want it. You're going to become Eminem, like, rapping about all these these Marvel fans. <laughs> <laughs> this fuck is, him and fuck you, too. This is why people think that this is all I rant about. They think <laughs> I just shit on Marvel because all day. you get very passionate about it. Th that's my thing. Like There's still a big twist of why is he there. There. You don't We'll know. find out. You will find out November 1st, 2019. All these fucking geniuses. Maybe it's Martian Manhunter. Maybe, it's, maybe just fucking wait and watch it. Christ. We do have something else coming out in 2019. It's going to be a big year. And we found out about this through E3 2018. 2019 is going to be a big year for us. Not only are we finding out what happened to Steve Trevor, but we did get our first stills of the movie that you will be in. That's right. Which is coming out December 31st, 21st. 2019. <laughs> New Year's Eve, bitches. <laughs> That'd be an awful launch. <laughs> That'd be the worst. So Merry Christmas if you celebrate, you're welcome. Yes. <laughs> if you want to if you don't celebrate, make this your holiday. Go watch my movie, Aquaman. Yeah. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. It is better than Justice League. And we did see the first stills. 
What'd you think? The, Were you impressed? You haven't seen these. I, I wasn't impressed. You weren't impressed by the stills? No. What did they do to Mara's hair? That's a fucking photo shoot. It like went they, from, her hair was not that red yeah, when we shot it. It went from normal to the fucking Little Mermaid. Blame Entertainment Weekly because, again, that's not what we shot. Entertainment Weekly, you bitches. They also made me even browner. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. Beach Ants. That's right, Beach Ants. <laughs> Did you like Nicole Kidman there? She, where was she? Uh, she was right next to me. She plays was my mom in the left? movie. Oh, yeah. Mm, I was too focused on this Little Mermaid hair. <laughs> it enraged me. How about fucking Black Manta? Yes. Amazing. Oh, and and Ocean Master. Ocean Master as well. We got to well. see him with his little fishy hair. That's right, Night Owl. Yeah, gonna be hiding under there like. Bah! So <laughs> fucking great! Another like Snyder regular. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, we did film mm-hmm. coming scenes from Ocean Master where he was spraying people's faces. I don't know if they're going to keep it though. They ran some test audience stuff and they don't have the same humor that we all Aww. do. So they might cut it. They didn't run it by me. I would have been like, "Wow, ah, this is the best thing ever." How- were, were they then like, "No, this is too jokey like the Marvel movies." And we don't, we don't <laughs> Those do jokes that. are way better than the shit we get right. in the If you want to call that humor, whatever it is. <laughs> The Marvel writing, big thumbs down. Ocean Master jumping out and coming on people is not as bad as... It's not as bad as the sh- fucking jokes they put in Ragnarok, for example. <laughs> Somehow but, making Jeff Goldblum unfunny. But they didn't They didn't have Ocean Master in like his, his ocean nets and some starfishes, <laughs> some anchors, barnacles. Wait till the end of the movie. Sand dollars. We'll see if there's budget left. Some beach ants. <laughs> He's better have some beach ants. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get to see Beach Ant soon. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Black, Black Manta, though. Yes. And Ocean Master. Yes. All good signs. And and you in a weird ponytail. Check it out. Yeah. Watch it. Go go see the stills and then watch your movie on not New Year's Eve, but 10 days before. Aquaman trailers very soon. Ooh. If it's not out already by the time you listen to this. Can't wait. Even though in episode 301 next week, we are going to dive really deep into E3 2018 with Scott from Lazy Gaming, guys, because he is probably the most hardcore gamer that I know. Knows a plethora of information that I never knew or thought of compared to the rest of my friends. And we're, we're going to go and touch on a lot of these stories, though. And I'm mainly going to focus on your opinion of these uh-huh. because Scott and I dive into it pretty heavily in 301. Mm-hmm. So probably one of the, am I wrong in saying that the game you're most excited for out of these E3 presentations? Depends. What's the game called? It's called Kingdom of Hearts Don't 3. Don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> we had several trailers and the delay, the one of many delays mm-hmm. that will happen with Kingdom mm-hmm. of Hearts 3. I still don't know what game you're talking about, but Kingdom Hearts 3 has been pushed back to January 2019. Here, here, listen, we all know you're going to gloat and get all your free beers, blah, blah, blah. It's the easiest fucking bet in the world. is my thoughts on that. I have already waited half of my life for this game. I don't know how long I've waited. You're 20 years old? (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, I wish. (laughs) I've already waited a third of my life (laughs) for this game. Fair enough. (laughs) What is six more months? That's what all the fans keep saying, and I'm like, it's not just going to be six months. (laughs) What is one more year? What is a thousand more years? Can I tell you that I still haven't watched this trailer? Haven't seen it. You're a host of a podcast that does comics, movies, TV, video games, and more, and you have not seen... Have you seen any screenshots? You you know what else I am, Daniel? A mom. A mother of an eight-month-old who gets into everything. (laughs) Tell him to get into the Kingdom of Hearts trailer so you can watch it with him. That's what you should be playing with him. He doesn't know what that game is either. Play that trailer for him as well as your violin hip-hop stuff. He only wants to watch violin hip-hop. Have you tried Kingdom of Hearts 3? I haven't, but he only wants to watch violin hip-hop. Well, let me tell you that they have added a Frozen world. Nah. Oh, I did see because somebody said that Elsa was running on the water like Naruto runs on water. <laughs> <laughs> Naturo, thank you. That's one, one other one of those names. Naturo? Yeah, I heard Naturo and I'm like, yes, Naturo forever. Isn't it really Naruto? Yeah, well, it's like Naruto, but it's Naruto. Naturo. It's Naturo. Trunks. <laughs> <laughs> How do they say Vegeta? Vegeta. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is Trunks. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to get frozen, and whether you like it or not. Yeah. 
We're going to get Pirates of the Caribbean again. Again? And they're going to do the, the first time. They're going to do the big sand fucking ship from the second movie. That's fucking shitty the first time. They're going to do that. Okay. Uh, they're also good. They expanded the Monsters Inc. world, so you That's actually got awesome. to hear Mike and Sully, and Aww. they're not really the same actors, Aww. but it sounds pretty close. All right. Uh, so you got to see that. You got to see more Toy Story worlds, mm -hmm. and then the there was one more world they added. Tangled. Yes, there you go. Tangled. I love Tangled. I love it. The other big upgrade too is in the previous Kingdom of Hearts games, you wouldn't get a costume upgrade mm -hmm. with every single world. You would get it with some, like Lion King, Nightmare Before Christmas, mm -hmm. Little Mermaid. Places where they had to be that way to fit in. Right. And now they're just like, fuck it, let's do it in all of them. Well, because we fucking love it. And then we eat up the toys like, nom, 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 different costumes. Yeah, that's that much more, more merchandise yeah. you can do. That many more plushes that you can do for the different costumes. You can do DLC mm -hmm. if you wanted to to keep those costumes in different worlds. Or I don't know. It's just you can find like ways to make money. Different costumes for different worlds. Like you want to be a different monster. Here you go. Pay a buck, and we'd be like, yeah, fuck it. Of course. <laughs> Overall, the, yeah, we're excited to eventually mm -hmm. play this when. Uh, like, I'm not worried about not being able to play this because by the time it releases, Leonardo will probably have his own grandchildren at that point. <laughs> and then, you know, I won't be worried about not having the time to play it. Yes, I will live that long. <laughs> I think by the time this does come out sometime in 2019, maybe 2020, Leo will be old enough to sit and enjoy playing a game, like watching us play a game. We shall see. <laughs> Fire Emblem, The Three Houses. Ooh. So we got the title. We know it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's rele releasing and launching on the Nintendo Switch in spring 2019. So Three Houses sounds like, I don't know, that you'll maybe have three different camps you're able to choose from. Yeah, they said that you can control three different characters throughout the game. So it's going to switch between the three. Okay, interesting. So players will be able to maneuver characters freely and form relationships with characters. Can you form relationships with yourself? I think the three characters you control, yeah, you can... I don't know if you can customize. I don't know. That's no, the but I want, I want like, I control this character and this character, and I want them to fall in love. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I want think to be that's what's in love happen. with myself. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Like, the general with the general yeah. type of thing. I doubt it. I think they're going to be separate throughout no. most of the game. But, like, I'll write letters to myself. Like, you don't know me, but I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that the... When I was reading the whole press release and the description, like they're like, you can control different troops, you can control three th different armies. Here's the different screenshots, and yeah, you can also do relationships. It's yeah! like that's what all of the gamers were waiting for. That's all I care about is the can relationships. I do, can I do my love sim? Done. Can, so can I? Can I make high powered children? I didn't even care about that. I just wanted the cute kids. I was like, oh, these two make an ugly kid. Not. <laughs> Mm -mm. So, are you happy with your dating sim? Yes. Your Fire Emblem? I love dating sims. That's all this is, right? Yeah. That's, a, <laughs> yes, that is all that I play these games for. I do like that you gladly get through the maps just to get to the next dialogue yeah. option. I do. I, like, pair them together from the very beginning. And it's like, Kelly, they fight horribly together. I'm like, but they're going to be in love. <laughs> they need to make a baby. <laughs> I also like that you replay, usually when you replay it the second time, that's when you're like, okay, now I know for sure which people I wanted together because mm -hmm. you've, you've made mistakes in the past. Yes, I have. I had to restart my game halfway through because I found out that I could fall in love with my brother who wasn't really my brother. It was like a stepbrother type of thing? No, he was in, like, I got adopted into the family. Okay. That's what happened. And Still kind of weird. And then I found out that I could fall in love with him, and I'm like, this is perfect. So then I, like, started going after him, but he wasn't really that nice. That was a mistake, too. <laughs> what was he saying? I don't know. He was just real cold, like, mm, I don't even remember. Like, so, I, I blocked it from him. So it wasn't, like, Krom who walks in on you showering and then love? <sighs> Shit. I loved Krom. He was great. He was the first thing I saw when I opened my eyes. And then he gladly took an energy sword through the heart for me yeah. to prove his love. And then he still loved me. Even though I energy sworded him, he's like, no, that wasn't really you. And I was like, oh, my God, Krom. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Krom. And what happens at the very end, at the very last scene of the whole game? And then the I story. open my eyes again, and he's like, finally, I found you. And I was like, oh, that perfect love story. <laughs> they tricked the shit out of you, too, because it's the exact same camera movement yeah. and animation as the beginning of the game. So you're thinking as a gamer, what the fuck? So this is an endless loop that you play at, but then it's Krom's uh, dialogue that's like, no, <gasps> wait, this is the end. This is different. All of this happened and counts. My heart... Is so full right now. 
because it was perfect. Wasn't there a dialogue option or a choice when you were going to stab Krom, but no matter what you... I think if you say you don't stab him, like, it's like, oh, my body still moved and, yeah. like, something like that, right? Yeah. But I, of course, said I wouldn't stab him. It wouldn't really matter because he knew I loved him anyway. We got married and we had two babies. Twins? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we had one, Lucina, and then... Some fucking weird magic kid. I don't know. The Lucina one was meant to... Like, that happens regardless right. with she, Krom, right? She shows up regardless of who Krom ends up with. Doesn't mm-hmm. mean, doesn't even matter. She shows up. Um, but the other one was only... It's your kid, so it's only if you end up with Krom. So he doesn't show up. That particular character doesn't show up with any other matchup unless you end up with Krom? No. It, whoever you end up with, that oh, kid shows yeah, up. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. But, like, the kid's hair color changes based on who you pair up. Does he pair... Is his blue like Krom's? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Both right. of my kids had dark hair. My children never look like me in games <laughs> or in real life. Doesn't even matter. <laughs> so I think this is the bulk of your of our E3 is you just preparing for all these relationships in Fire Emblem. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let's move into Pokemon, though, because mm-hmm. this this podcast, you know, just reflecting on the 300 episodes, we used to cover Pokemon way more than we do these days. And I, that has to do, one, with our shifting of what people like to hear about. I've noticed that a lot of our listeners are a little bit older, so they're like, I don't I don't care about Pokemon. Like, that they tune in for the DC news, the comic news, the movie news. But there are still a plenty of, of Pokemon fans, like like the Real High Tech. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we do have some Pokemon news here, of course, because we still love them. I've got them tattooed on my <laughs> left arm. And you can go ahead and lead into it. So we've discussed the Pokemon Let's Go games, Pikachu and Eevee, and we talked about how there was going to be a Pokeball feature. So players who get the Pokeball plus accessory will obtain Mew for Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Go. So I incorrectly stated, and I do, that's my fault because Jeff isn't working on Pokemon. So, you know, I was just yeah, going off of what of they course. told us in the fucking trailers. But the Pokemon that was exclusive to this connection Ended up being Mew and not an all new Pokemon, which kind of blew my mind. I'm like, it should have been a new Pokemon. But then when I'm like, oh, so this is how you fucking obtain Mew. It's going to cost you the linkage of one game plus your app and the fucking Pokemon Go accessories. It's costing you like 80 bucks to get Mew. And fucking genius. people are eating it up. Pokeball Plus is a motion controller that allows player to catch Pokemon by mimicking throwing a Pokeball at your TV screen. It is going to potentially cost you $500 when you break your TV screen <laughs> yep. because you actually let go of this Pokeball. Yeah, we're not buying that. I'm not going to risk Leo <laughs> doing that. Not that our, not that my child would ever do that. <laughs> he already throws my cell phone. That's why I have $100 worth of cell phone case protection. <laughs> Players can also take the Pokemon with them on the go and hear their cry like in the anime and the game. So that's what this accessory does. You hit the little button, it moves, and then you hear the Pokemon out of it. All of the cries are the video game, like, glitchy fucking cry. <laughs> except for Pikachu of and course. Eevee. Of course. But wouldn't you rather have... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that could be one of 50 Pokemon. <laughs> Just 50? <laughs> <laughs> This game is set to release November 16, 2018. Because they did not announce a Star Fox game, the one that I was most excited for was Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. It actually features every fucking character from all previous Super Smash Bros. games. You know what's really cool about this? (laughs) What? Who cares? (laughs) You don't smash at all. You haven't done Smash Bros. since the first one, right? Ever. You didn't do the N64 one? I think yeah, I did, did do the N64 one. And you know what? After that, who cares? <laughs> I very much care. All right. You about care. Smash Bros. You know what you care about? You care about Toon Link and Young Link because that's all I have heard about since they made this <laughs> announcement. I, they're the exact same fucking character. No reason for them to have both, but they did it. Because there'd be that one fucking Toon Link character that would bitch about them not including Toon Link and instead doing Young Link. So instead, here's fucking both. They literally did everything on here. Ian Flynn, who's been on the show before, he writes Sonic the Hedgehog. He tweeted out, Smash Brothers, have it your way edition. <laughs> like, this is what the fucking thing is. And you know what? People are eating it up. Sort of. Like, there's still complaints. And even there was another meme that I saw that it was Sakurai, and he said, uh, he, <laughs> this was the quote. It was, don't ever ask me for anything again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gave it to you all. Because they went even farther than just having any character that you want. 
This game will also support the GameCube controller, the Switch's Joy-Con, and the Pro controller. So again, have it your way. Yes. Play it however you want. And all Amiibos are compatible with Ultimate. All Amiibos. Not all even just the ones that they initially did where it's like, that's the Mario one mm-hmm. for Smash Brothers. Even the 3D pixelated Mario works on that. Even the Super Mario Odyssey ones work on it. All of them fucking work on it. And you have stages for the first time. Saffron City from the N64 version is ah, coming back. That's awesome. In this one. And and they've actually... we I ended up looking it up and... Scott and I had talked about it briefly, mm-hmm. and we weren't sure if it was a complete remake of the stage or if they just imported it. They just imported it. Like, it still <laughs> looks fucking pixelated and shit, and it's, like, perfect. Mwah. You did it right. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Now everybody can shut up, but you, you smashers will still find something to complain about. Oh, yeah. they th- People have done, like, the meme of, like... The Smash Brothers player who only plays Melee has joined and complained on the roster. And it has, like, this character with a GameCube controller. Mm. <laughs> they did Ridley as a character, which they've been asking for years on. Mm-hmm. Years and years they want Ridley. And last year, or I'm sorry, the last Smash Brothers, they got close, the closest they ever got to it. And Sakurai said, the reason we didn't put Ridley in it is because he's a massive character. He would never work. He's kind of like Giga Bowser. He's massive. Wouldn't work in Smash Brothers. We'd have to shrink him down, and that's not who the character is. So instead, in the Samus stage, if you damaged him enough, he would fight on your team for a brief period of time. So they said that's the closest we'll we'll get to Ridley. Not good enough. People, like, hack the game so that you can control big-ass Ridley. They kept asking for him still. So have it your way, right? He is now a tiny version of Ridley so that he matches the rest of the characters, and he's in the game. He's revealed trailer. He impales Mega Man with his tail... And then he crushes Mario's head with his claw. It's like, holy fuck. Like, there was that one tweet that said, we had to sacrifice Mario and Mega Man for you to get your (laughs) fucking Ridley. And people got their Ridley. Mm -hmm. Here it is. And what did they complain about? Two things, Kelly. The two main things they complained about. Ridley's too small. No, they did not give a shit about Ridley's size, which which it's like, this is why they didn't want him in there, you fucking idiots. But no one complained, so I couldn't say that. It was that Waluigi wasn't in there. Jesus, who cares about Waluigi? (laughs) It's like, I like Waluigi. I don't want to play as him in Smash Brothers. He's going to be like, bum, 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 (laughs) Waluigi, bum, bum. In Japan, he's not liked at all. I think that's why they really not. Mm. In in the U.S., though, people, he has a pretty big fan. Why? Okay, whatever. I played as him in Smash or er, Mario Kart for the GameCube. I love him. Controlled extremely well. That's exactly why. Because I looked at all the stats and I'm like, that of character. <laughs> mm, whatever. So that then I grew to like Waluigi, mm. but I'm still not asking for him in Smash. The other t- the other thing that they did is they reduced Zero Suit Samus's cup size. Her boobs are smaller in this Smash Brothers, and people flipped on that too. Have you men ever tried to do anything with boobs? I'm sure many have. I've seen documentaries where guys get surgeries <laughs> and wear suits. Okay, so have they have they run and have them slapping them in the face? Good for Samus. I am happy for her because now she can live a normal life. <laughs> now she can fight normally. But who's your demographic? <laughs> who's the demographic? Uh, I can't. It, what's funny is we had this on the flip side, like the same nonsense. Like mm-hmm. I agree with you. Like, it's like who gives a fuck? Because it's, it's all the guys that are trying to make, like, the photo mode. I don't know if you knew this, but there's a photo mode in Smash Brothers where you can position the characters in any way you'd like and take photos of them. So what people were doing with Zero Suit Samus is they would have her in very provocative poses with other Smash Brothers characters. And uh, they tried to put a stop to some of this. Like, in the last Smash Brothers, characters with skirts, like, they put, like, a black shadow that mm-hmm. you couldn't see their undergarments like you could in Melee. And uh, in this case, with Zero, they're like, fucking Zero Suit Samus, they reduced her cup size. And then Snake from Metal Gear Solid, he had a tight ass in, <laughs> in the last Smash Brothers. And this time they made it flat, like just a flat ass. And there, that was another thing, like credit to them. They're like, and Snake too. And I'm like, oh shit, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you were just posing everybody. <laughs> shit. So th- that's those are the two fucking things. And I'm like, you know what? They should just scrap the fucking game. Get just rid of it. throw it all away. Get rid of it. You're right. They've made her boobs too small and they didn't put Waluigi. What's the fucking point? <laughs> and Snake's ass is gone. <laughs> and Snake's ass is gone. <laughs> it was on Nightwing levels. Wow. Yeah. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> so is this a game that you will be getting? If I... I, I don't know. Like, I'm... I know I said last time I would never get it. I'm probably not going to get a Switch because I'm not going to have time to play it. Mm-hmm. What time do we have for it? As we said before, it's a miracle we're doing the podcast even. Woo! But with the Switch, I, like, I got to play Smash Brothers. I have to play Smash Brothers. They brought back Wolf, who was my main 
in Super Smash Brothers Brawl after they fucking made an embarrassment out of Fox McCloud. But when they didn't have Wolf in Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U, I moved on to Greninja, which was like the next best thing. Still quick, still heavy, can't really knock him off the stage. I was pretty damn good with Greninja. And now that they're both back, it's like, I gotta make a choice. Do I choose the frog or the canine? Do you go with your one true love, your original love? Or the the replacement. <laughs> well, here's what's interesting, and I'm going to let you analyze this. My one true love was Fox and McCloud. Wolf mm. is a clone of Fox and McCloud. Oh. So who is the, like, the clone of my one true love or the the replacement? Is it the bounce back? What do they call it? The bounce? The, the rebound? rebound? <laughs> you can tell how long we've been in a relationship. <laughs> I don't even fucking know what it's called. I, I don't know. I can't answer this one for you. I'd I'm gonna say, have to go on a I'd journey. I say you're gonna have to go back with Fox. Have them like all try to woo you. See who does the best job. Can we make a dating sim where I'm like the <laughs> <laughs> I'm the prize? <laughs> I hope so. And you Please. get to play. You get to pick either Greninja, Fox, or Wolf. Yeah. And then you're trying to like woo you compared to the other. Why am I talking about random ass characters wooing you? We have to move <laughs> Your on. Your idea, not mine. Listen. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that is it. It's coming out on December 7, 2018. If we didn't mention it already, that's their big one. Mm-hmm. And that was really it for Nintendo. There wasn't a, a brand new Star Fox title announced. He showed up in another tie-in game. If you bought the toy model, then they would unlock it in a exclusive. Like, there was no Star Fox. Mm. And I was hoping for a Star Fox Zero port because that's what they did with Smash. As much as you want to fucking disagree with me, this is the Wii U version of Smash with all of the DLC characters plus the programmed characters from the the uh, Wii version of Smash Brothers. This is a deluxe version of the Wii U Smash as well it should be because you can market it as an all-new game, which right. it's not. But you can still sell it for $60 and there's much less development time behind mm-hmm. it. So good for them. I'm telling you, this is what it is, but you should be happy as well. <laughs> And with that, that covers all our news for the week. We can move into our Broquette Block. This is the dating sim you wanted to cover. Yes! It's called Pub Encounter, which I, I maybe I shouldn't have told you about. You shouldn't have because now I want to buy a Switch just to play this game. <laughs> we get press release emails for the games that are coming out, mm-hmm. the downloaded games, every single thing. We get screenshots that are exclusive and high quality, all of that as part of having the podcast. And thankfully, Nintendo sends us this and gives us access to it. And as I was going through the list, because I looked through all of them, every single one of them, and I saw Pub Encounter. I'm like, what the hell is this? Because the screenshot <laughs> looked like some skeezy fucking anime, <laughs> like a hentai, where this guy's like all over this main character, which is you, because you don't really see her face. And mm. that's always how they do these dating sims. And he's ki- about to kiss her. And she's like, oh, surprise. Like, clearly he's in her space, right? <laughs> but because it's Japanese, it's okay. <laughs> And I'm like, what the hell is this? And I showed it to you. And then I'm like, check this out, Kelly. You try to woo middle-aged men in this dating sim. Brilliant. And the tagline was, quote, you're going to be the last person I ever fall in love with. (laughs) (laughs) This game is made for all the moms and middle-aged women out there because I am eating this shit up. You were showing me all these middle-aged men and I'm just like, Yes. And then you got to one middle aged man and I'm like, he's too young. <laughs> there are like all there's one all gray haired one with glasses. There's the one that's like pr- still trying to remain keep that youth. Like he's got this kind of half facial hair thing and he's trying to do his hair in gel, but you can tell he's also old. Mm-hmm. There's like the feminine looking old guy. And you just ask me like, which is the one that's divorced? <laughs> <laughs> divorced with a child. <laughs> because that's the one that I'm going to go after. I really want to play this game, but it is only for the Switch. And that hurts my heart. Because if it was on my DS and I'd be taking it to work like beep, 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 beep. And they're like, Kelly, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm wooing middle-aged men. <laughs> Maybe one day you will get the chance to play Pub Encounter because you can have it on the go. That's the Switch's big thing. If anybody plays it, let me know what happens. Let me make the choices for you. (laughs) Watch a Let's Play. Just, no, because I don't get to make the choices. Watch the Let's Play that chooses the things that you would. I'm sure there's going to be multiple endings. Someone out there is going to do it if it's not already up. Mm. (laughs) But with that, let's head into our Patreon shoutouts of the week. We have a whole lot of Patreon shoutouts this week due to our schedules and vacations. We don't have a normal show next week, so we 
put it all into this week because we want to make sure that we thank every single one of our Patreon backers throughout the month. For the rest of this month. Yes. Yeah, because we did have some last week, which we're not going to include in this one, but we are going to do the ones that we normally would have included in mm-hmm. 601 on this episode. So the first one goes out to Kyle on Twitter, at Kyle Inge, who presented us with... A commemorative episode 300 trophy Stop! from him and all of the Brokehead Core Aww, members. Aw, that's so sweet. Brokehead, the little symbol is with a microphone mm-hmm. symbol on it and everything on the trophy. Congratulations on 300 episodes. We have the best fucking listeners. We do. Absolutely. This is a big fucking trophy, too. This isn't like one of those little dollar store things, that, like participation awards. <laughs> <laughs> like the Dundies in the yes, office? Yes, yes. No, this is fucking huge trophy. I stumbled upon it in your car, and you're like, no, 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 don't look at it. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really cool. Thank you guys so much. It really means a lot to us. We have talked about it because you didn't know about it until now. Mm-hmm. Uh, aside from stumbling on it, you didn't know what kind of trophy it no. was. Though. Uh, we were saying that when we do have our our recording room set up and we can do like little videos of us recording, we can have that trophy in the background. And if we win this year, the podcast awards, that one's Both right next to it. Shit. Like that's fucking going to be mm-hmm. really, really cool to have. So that that's incredible. Thank you so much to at Kyle Lynch, of course, and to the rest of the Brocat core members that were a part of this secret that I had no fucking idea <laughs> about. So th- this is such an amazing, mm-hmm. amazing uh, commemorative milestone gift, I guess for, for episode three, I don't even know what to call it. Like the, it is the love of the listeners impersonated and in physical form as this 300 trophy. It's our thricentennial <laughs> <laughs> trophy. That's right. <laughs> our next shout out goes out to Robin, whose Twitter handle and Instagram is at Robin Concepts. He posted up mystery model sketches on Instagram. Mm. So have you ever seen like the the type of reference images or reference paintings and drawings that you do see in like your regular art classes. Mm-hmm. Well, he did with, with his advanced skill already, the form of the human body is something that you have to really master no matter what kind of style of art you are going to move forward with on characters because you got to learn perspective. You got to learn how the shadow falls. And if you want to see someone who is uh, uh, well on the way to mastering his craft, way further than I ever was, you want to go to Robin's Twitter and Instagram at Robin Concepts. Our next shout out goes out to Matt on Twitter, who is at Mr. Forklift. He retweeted some Calvin and Hobbes comic strips about being lazy in the summer. I love Calvin and Hobbes. Perfect time for it. You got to have your rum and coke in the summer and have a good time. (laughs) Next up, we have Rob, whose Twitter handle is at The Real Psytech. He has a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the real SciTech, and SciTech is spelled S I T E K. He retweeted the Hello, GameStop. Do you have Battletoads meme after Battletoads got announced at E3? <laughs> that was one of the things that people were saying. Now, GameStop employees can say, Yeah, you can pre order Battletoads. But I, being the, I guess, troll, or I don't know <laughs> what you want to call it, but I used to get those phone calls at GameStop when I worked there, and they used to actually do. The Battletoads old game as a, uh, not the LC, but like the virtual console Mm -hmm. basically for the Xbox. So technically I did have Battletoads. I would say, yeah, we do. And they'd be like, huh? And I'd be like, yeah, you just got to buy an Xbox points card. It's about 300 and that then you can buy Battletoads on your console. They'd be like, oh. And like they would, some of them would try like, well, no, I'm looking for like the actual game. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you just download it. No, 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 like the actual cartridge. And I'm like, well, no, you can actually just buy the physical card. And it's kind of like, and at that point, they would give up and hang up. Right. Some of them would like curse, like, well, fuck you, and like hang up. And I'm like, oh, I won. <laughs> what a <laughs> do, nice young do man. Do kids even prank call anymore? Is that still a thing? They do, because I get it occasionally at the comic really? shop. Really? But it, it, it also never works, because again, I've dealt with so many of them. Right. I'm like, all right. And I'll either just hang up if I'm busy, mm. or I'll, I'll be like, no, I'll answer the question legitimately, <laughs> like as serious as possible. <laughs> Our next shout out goes out to Jared, whose Twitter handle is at Spoon Sandwich. He is super hyped, super hyped for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. He is choosing Eevee. He can't listen to us anymore. <laughs> he's a he's a he's a backer and a listener and mm-hmm. a Brokehead Core member. He can choose whatever version he wants. Doesn't mean he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at this, Jared. You made mom and dad fight. <laughs> next up, we have Scott, whose Twitter handle is at 
Lazy Gaming Guys. Yes, one of the many members of Lazy Gaming Guys. One of four members, including Chirpy. And he's going to be in episode 301 Woo! next week. Thank you so much, Scott and Lazy Gaming Guys, for letting us borrow him for an episode. Next up, we have Joss, whose Instagram is at Decal Avenue. He shared a how to trick your dog into eating veggies video. Mm -hmm. How so do you do that? They held up a pizza slice, and uh -huh. when he'd go to eat that, they'd held up a broccoli, and he would eat that instead. Aww, <laughs> poor doggy. And I don't know if that's good for dogs, and I'm sure the comment section would have told me for oh, sure. Oh, it would have. That's, that's torture, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So next up, we have Alusnak, whose Twitter handle is at Alusnak, and also Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash Alusnak. How do you spell Alusnak? A-L-U-E-S-N-O-C. That's right. He put out, quote... Hashtag E3 2018 was pretty awesome. It's hard to make everyone happy, but I sure am. I am going to E3 2019. Ooh. Well, I'm glad he's happy. Take lots of pictures of Lusnock. Mm -hmm. I want to go one day. I'll live vicariously <laughs> through you. And our final shout out goes out to, it's just a Twitter handle. Yeah, There's no on Twitter. name. Look at that. On Twitter, at Innsmouth underscore Tide. That's spelled... I-N-N-S-M-O-U-T-H underscore T-I-D-E. He shared his 9.8 CBCS graded Batman number one from DC Rebirth, the Tim Sale variant as signed by David Finch and Tom King. Wow, 9.8. Amazing. Tom King just showed up on that fucking late night talk show. Mm -hmm. And David Finch showed up in uh, Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> As that one villain as Zaz. He was Zaz. not Zaz. <laughs> Just because they both have no eyebrows. Look, I mean, how many other characters or people don't have that? He's a character too, because right. now he's in there. Right. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, on uh, our Patreon backing. So huge thanks to Add In Smouth underscore Tide, Elus Knock, Josh, Scott, Jared, Rob, Matt, Robin, Kyle, Christian, Cap, Brian, John, Neil, Ludus and Katie, Bobby, Alexander, Mr. Purple Swordfish, all of you. Mm -hmm. And here's your shout out on the milestone episode number 300. If you too would like your shout out every single month, head on over to patreon.com slash the reasons I'm broke for as little as $1 a month. It goes out to 25 cents an episode. If you feel like you're getting 25 cents worth of entertainment, news, comedy, whatever it may be, head on over to patreon.com slash the reasons I'm broke. But of course, just like the last 300 episodes, our podcast will always be free. The absolute best thing you can do for us is leave us a review on whatever podcatcher you use. Let your friends know about us. Spread the word about Emperor Palpa Kelly and all her kindness. Huge thanks to decalavenue.com. But also, if you have uh, enjoyed the 300 episodes of the Reasons I'm Broke podcast, if you're enjoying the heavy editing that went into today's episode... <laughs> If you haven't already, please leave us a review on iTunes. Head on over to iTunes even if you don't have an iPhone or if you don't consume the podcast through Apple Podcasts. That is the biggest mm -hmm. source of downloads for the show. Borrow your friend's Apple iPhone device, iDevice, whatever it may be. I clearly don't have one. I'm an Android guy. You can download iTunes on a regular Windows computer. Do it there then. Okay. Download it on there. Throw up your email. Make a quick account. And leave us a, a review on mm -hmm. iTunes. It helps other people find the podcast. But before we wrap up our show, we do have some special episode number 300 clips that past Daniel left to future Daniel for a long time, and now it has become present no, Daniel. No, no, no. These are Whoa. first the clips that were sent by the oh. listeners. The listener clips Palpa Kelly. Hey. She makes mistakes. She's not perfect. I do not make mistakes. <laughs> then what you was just that? changed your mind. <laughs> <laughs> So the first one comes from at Jamie 1000013. And here is the clip from Jamie. Hello and shout out from the UK. So my question is, do you own any first appearance comics? And if so, what CGC grade are they? I currently own a CGC 6.0 copy of The Flash 139, which is the first appearance of Reverse Flash. And also own uh, Amazing Spider-Man 129, which is the first appearance of The Punisher. The next first appearance comic I want to buy is The Flash 110, which is the, both the first appearance of Wally West as Kid Flash and uh, Weather Wizard. I uh, just got one more question. If you could own any first appearance comic, what would it be and why? Uh, awesome podcast, guys, and keep up the good work. 
Aw, thank you. That's so sweet. All the way from the UK. That's amazing. Look at that. My voice travels far. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From the Death Star to the Earth. I don't know how far that is. Why am I living on the Death Star? The I, don't wanna, I don't want to live in that shit. It gets blown up. <laughs> All right. Shit. Emperor can decide. <laughs> I decide what I want. Yeah, thank you so much. So, Reverse Flash's first appearance. That's, that's amazing. pretty amazing. That's a good book to have. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's one we've had at the comic shop a couple of times. Never lasts long. Uh, as far as the ones we own, I think the, some of the biggest ones are Batman Adventures number 12. That one we have CGC graded mm -hmm. at a 9.4, and that is, of course, the first appearance of Harley Quinn, uh, the probably your most treasured comic mm -hmm. book. That one. We also have Saga number one, CGC graded. Right, which is the first appearance of several characters. Of Hazel. Uh, you've you've also got the... Pretty much all the Prince saga, TV? everybody. Prince, Prince uh, <laughs> <laughs> television show up Prince in that? Prince Robot. Yes. King Robot. Prince Robot the fourth. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure the Will's in that, isn't he? Probably. I haven't read number one in a long time, but you do have, of course, is the first appearance of every character that you see in that mm -hmm. book. So I do. Saga's Marco my and Alana. Yep. yep. Uh, that we also have the first appearance of Rachel Ghoul, my yes. favorite comic book villain, right behind Sinestro. <laughs> and uh, that one is CGC graded at a 5.0, which shocked the shit out of me. Because <laughs> me, as someone who does put grades on comics because I work at a comic shop, so I have to price, price them according to grade. I graded that one at a 3.0 wow. because it did have water damage. Mm -hmm. And that's it wasn't pressed or any of that. So I'm like, this is a, this is going to come back at 3, but I don't give a shit because I, want, I, I will never you sell preserve it, the first of appearance of Rachel Ghoul. Cool. I wanted to have it because it was my f and I bought it knowing that it was in crappy condition. Like I paid cash to the guy. They even made him like a lower offer, and he's <laughs> like, "Sure," because <laughs> I'm like, "That book's not worth that, man. Look at the water stains." He's like, "All right, I'm I'll never sell this anyway." And I'm like, "And I want to have it." So right. done. Uh, so we do have the first appearance of Rachel Gold 5.0. Uh, what are the first appearances? I guess I would oh first Poison Ivy of yeah. course. Yeah. That one came back. What was it a? 6.5 i believe i gotta look at it six i gotta look at it again but yeah we have the first appearance mm -hmm. of poison ivy which i did not pass up again that one we had at the comic shop once it sold within two hours of it being on the on the floor so either one we underpriced it we didn't or two uh the you know it was just a fucking hot character and it right. was so it came back in again at the shop and i'm like yep sold <laughs> right Dad, now take it we have the first appearance of john stewart uh yes. signed by neil adams um. Who is uh, yeah? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that one is a 3.0, also crummy shape. But again, we don't care. Mm -hmm. We want to have first John Stewart, and the comic that I do want to own, of course, is the first appearance of Sinestro, which I believe is Green Lantern number two. We're never going to have that. <laughs> it's way too expensive. Unless like the cover is missing, then I'll pay 500 for that fucking shit. Like it's crazy. But the other one I really want to own is Batman number 227. It is Neil Adams's. I know Neil Adams. He's a great artist, not a nice person. But it's his recreated cover of an older Batman issue mm -hmm. in which, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's got like the castle and the, the long yeah. driveway and Batman in the back. That's one that I still want to own and I haven't pulled the trigger on yet because it is still really, really expensive. It's only going to get more expensive. Just buy it. Here's also our next episode 300 voice clip from at Mac the Murderer. Congratulations, Dan and Kelly, on uh, episode 300. This is Mace, also at Mac the Murderer on Twitter, and I just wanted to say congratulations. You guys are doing an amazing job, and I kind of had a question um, about comic books, so I don't, I'm not a huge comic book guy, but with some of the suggestions you guys have given on the podcast, I've read a couple, and I just want to know, am, am I kind of like a douchebag because I don't buy comics? Um, I, I'm not a fan of having a whole bunch of books or games like physical media. So I usually just go to the library and read, rent out and read the comics and just bring them back to the library. So is that like a way that I'm not supporting the artist and the writers and stuff like that? I just want to get you guys' opinions. All right. See you guys. I am not in the comic industry, so I will, I will first of all, thank you <laughs> <laughs> for, for tuning into the podcast as long as you have and, of course, for leaving us a message. I don't think you are by renting it out from the library. I read mangas through my manga reader app. I'm sure that's legal. <laughs> I'm sure that's legal. But the thing is, you're still getting involved in this medium. And if you find something you really like, at least with us, 
when it when it comes to something like movies that we see in the theaters or something like that, if we find something we really like, we do purchase it. And, you know, no fault to you for not wanting to have a lot of clutter in your house. I get it. There's too much clutter in my house and it's, <laughs> it's mostly baby things. But you're still going and enjoying the work. And I, I guess I feel that if I were an artist or a creator, just to know that somebody's still reading my stuff and going to the library is very legal. It's not like they're pirating it, but... You know, somebody say, hey, you know, I I didn't have the money or I didn't have the opportunity to purchase this, but I checked it out for my library and I really enjoyed it. It was a great book. Yes, more power to you. You're still reading my things and getting enjoyment from it. My take on this is, one, you're not a douchebag because you're not complaining about a certain comic being canceled mm-hmm. or a certain book no longer existing because then you're you're not complaining about it because you're not supporting it. Like, then you would be a douchebag. And there's a lot of people like that. You see that every time with the the Marvel female characters and minority characters that got canceled. And it's like, well, you guys weren't fucking buying this shit. <laughs> of course it got canceled. So in this case, yeah, that's, that would make you a douchebag, but in your, you're enjoying the medium. You're enjoying the characters. You're enjoying the, 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 what it is. Right. So anytime you do see these characters show up again in something else, or even when you talk to your friends and family about the Red Sun Superman, for example, mm-hmm. or whatever it is that you may have read, you're in that case, promoting that product or that character to someone else who then in turn may end up going out and reading it or buying it or whatever you are, pro- you are continuing that brand and that mm-hmm. character by talking about it and not complaining about not more material being there. So no, my ruling is, not a douchebag. <laughs> That's the big stamp. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the next clip goes out to at Kyle Inge. Thank you so much at mm-hmm. Kyle Inge for submitting your message for episode 300. Hey, Daniel and Kelly. This is Twitter user at Kyle Inge. First, I want to say congratulations to reaching 300 episodes and the incredible amount of work it takes to edit and record and put out this show on a weekly basis, despite having actual lives and actual day jobs. This show uh, means a lot to me. I'm relatively new, as, as I think some of the broquettes would know. I've only been listening for maybe the past 100 episodes. But to me, this show is just, it's kind of like getting a, a once-a-week lunch with old friends. I get to hear about comics. I get to hear about video games. And uh, you're just familiar voices that I, I get to listen to while I'm sitting on the highway on my way to work. And I wouldn't miss it for the world. And, you know, whatever support myself and the rest of the Brokettes can be as we go on to 400 or even 500 episodes, uh, we look forward to helping you guys and just thank you for everything you do in putting out this show. Thanks. Thank you so much, Kyle, not only for your continued listening to us, but for our big ass trophy <laughs> <laughs> to all our Patreons and Brokettes who help them make that a reality. But, one thing, and I think Daniel can can share this feeling with me, um, is our brokettes feel like family and friends, too. Mm-hmm. You guys really do when we interact with you, even if we've never met, interacting with you on Twitter, on different social medias. When you like my Twitter things, I'm like, oh, people like the things that I say. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, our, a big thank you goes out to all of you guys, too, for the what you do for us, for interacting with us and becoming those friends. And the final voicemail comes from at inmats68. Thank you so much, Neil. Here is his voicemail for 300. 300 episodes. Wow, that is incredible. Congratulations, Daniel, Kelly, and even Leo on this milestone achievement. Thank you for sharing your love of movies, comics, video games, and more with us. The show has grown drastically over this time and continues to do so. Thank you for letting the Broquette Core grow with you and even allowing us to help out with the show at times. It's been one heck of a ride, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. See you guys for number 600. Aw, that was so sweet, too. <laughs> Our Broquettes are so nice. Of course. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> yeah, the sweetest, kindest, strongest, best fans. In brightest day and in blackest night. All of the above, of course. Yeah, thank you so much, Neil. That kindest of words, sweetest Mm -hmm. of words. It it means a lot to us that he is also one of our longer time uh, listeners. Um, I would say, yeah, he's the longest listener from this batch, I think. It's close 
between him and Maceo, but Neil's been there like for a long, wow. long, long time listening to the podcast. So we have changed a lot. No one go back and listen to number one. Don't do it. <laughs> well, that's that's a nice thing about it too is that it's it we've have have changed and grown, and hopefully episode six hundred sounds way better or is a better episode than episode three hundred. If you're listening to this after you've heard six hundred, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, th- uh, that's my, you know, that's the goal to mm-hmm. forever improve. And hopefully, yes, episode 400, 500, and so on. Even episode 301, 302. Hopefully, you know, we strive to do something better than we have in the past. So thank you so much to Neil, Maceo, Kyle, and uh, at Jamie100013 for sending in clips for episode mm-hmm. 300. You guys are always able to send in clips, though, not just for episode 300. If you go to the comment, no, where is it? The description of the podcast, there is a link for speakpipe.com. You just click on the link, you record it just like you would a voicemail, sends it straight to us. That's right. Uh, We're going to close out today's episode. There's not going to be a comic book highlight, Mm -hmm. as we mentioned earlier, but we are going to close it out with select clips that this is where the bulk of the fucking editing went. (laughs) (laughs) It took me a while to do it, but I know you guys enjoyed it when Mm -hmm. we did it for episode 200. So we're going to do it for episode 300. And I have since episode 200 earmarked and made notes of certain clips that I found funny and hilarious that you guys have enjoyed as well. And I said, all right, that'll be in 300. And I'm thinking like, yeah, if we get there, we're here. <laughs> That's <laughs> Surprise, Future Dan's bitches. problem. It's my problem now. <laughs> and it's for you to enjoy. Mm. Uh, so we're going to have those. That's how we're going to close out the show. Uh, before we do, how do you want to close out 300 episodes of the Reasons I'm Broke podcast? I first want to thank you for the last 300 episodes. This podcast would be non-existent without you. And would not have continued on as long as it has without you. So thank you for all the work that you do. Wouldn't exist without you either. I could not do the Sad. podcast without you Paul Pekeli. You did it for seven weeks without me and you were fine. And the Brocat core came through and were a part of the show, as Neil mentioned. They came through for for the rest of the core. So it's, it's like we're all there for one another. And, <laughs> uh, but the I, I think the heart, you know, the definitely the heart of the show is people do talk mm-hmm. about you a lot. And, mm. you know, it wouldn't be the same show at all without you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I do want to. I, I, it always goes back to, you know, obviously, I thank my co-host, wife, partner and mm-hmm. life, best friend on the podcast. Uh, but of also our support, the people that are there, the people that are downloading, like the listeners. <laughs> My parents are watching our kid right now, so we can <laughs> shout out to the parents, that. the grandparents, <laughs> of course. But you, you know, you guys are the foundation of the of podcast, course. the support of mm-hmm. the podcast, the fact that we have downloads every single week. That's what keeps it going. The the the, the tweets and the the support on Patreon, all of that is the frosting of everything else. Those are like the you know the walls and the roof and everything. But the fact that there is someone on the other side listening and downloading and enjoying makes it worth it and makes us keep going all around the world. As I just learned, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and again, I do put up like the top five countries mm-hmm. that listen to the show, and I, I'm always interested to see how it changes. California is still top dog as far mm-hmm. as like states in the mm-hmm. U.S. And then the U.S. is is one of the biggest. I know it's like Germany, the U.S., Mexico, and wow. uh, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, there's there's a couple of different ones. Uh, the U.K. is, is mm-hmm. on the top five as well. So huge thanks to all of you for being there, simply for being there. And as always, even if you feel like maybe you're too shy to say something or, or you're like, you know, you're, oh, I'm, I'm, I've heard this before. Like, I'm not clever enough. To, it's like, just shoot us a tweet. It doesn't matter. Become a part of the family. Right. It doesn't work. I, I'm an idiot. Like, I say dumb <laughs> shit all the time on the podcast and off the podcast, <laughs> you know? So it's it's like, I. but the thing is, be fearless. Don't mm. give a shit. Like, just get We're out We're just there. normal people. That's all we are. Like, really, that is all. People that have met us are like, oh, yeah, they're just, they're just people. Like normal people. <laughs> yeah, unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> but, guys, with that, we will move into our highlights of the last 100 episodes. Once again, thank you all so, so much. And, Broquettes, all will be well. See you next week. <laughs> you You also used to skid and race with, with the forklifts <laughs> like if it was raining especially if it was if it was if it was raining if it was raining because the tires on those things were bald <laughs> of course they are so if you so you would just like race and you would like hit it and it has a chip inside of it so you can't go like too fast but you can go like 20 miles an hour which is still pretty fast for a forklift yeah and so you just hit the brakes all of a sudden <laughs> turn the wheel and you would just skid sideways down.
I remember one time I, I didn't do it right, and I rammed the forklift, the blade, right into, like, this other machinery, and the forklift blade bent upwards. <laughs> Now you know but how those are feel. fun. This is not fun. No, well, I'm just gonna call it Razagul. Don't okay? call it that. Don't call Kingdom of Hearts by the wrong name. I anyway. promise, I won't today. Go ahead. <laughs> Stop. They have to fight at first, but then team up. Like Ocean Master's trying to come on his face, but then Moon Knight's dodging him, trying to pull down his fucking face, <laughs> trying to get him to moon him, and then eventually they work together Wait, because they realize but that they're if both... Ocean Master's coming on his face, aren't his pants already down? So Not necessarily, because so, he, he might have like a like a slot. Like he's, you don't think he's <laughs> equipped already? Because <laughs> that's gonna take it time to take him off. I'm sure he's got like an opening, so he can just fire like. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you, I mean, speaking about romance, so I was watching, what was it, Apollo 13, where they go up there and they blow up the asteroid? Never seen it. Right? Heard, you, is that Armageddon? Is that what you think? thinking Oh, about? yeah, Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's like a spacey movie. Okay. I'm like, I have not seen Apollo 13, but I know Tom Hanks is not blowing up asteroids. <laughs> you don't hire Tom Hanks to blow up asteroids. <laughs> The fact that I'm excited, all the people that grew up, like, they're mm-hmm. collecting the, the older Spider-Man issues, they must be on, just, just their thrilled. excitement must be through the roof on them There's and like, good on oh, them. Oh, just, like, coming all over the place. <laughs> I mean... Creating web wings of their own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cracking myself up tonight. <laughs> Shit. Their own web shooters. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Have him show up every single week and have him be one of the many aliens on the ship. Can he be the Pale Man? That would be fucking amazing. Aww. The Pale Man on the Star Trek Enterprise. And he keeps trying to eat like, well, I mean, he'd be trying to eat babies, right? Isn't yeah, that, wasn't that his thing? Can, would he be like a yellow shirt? Like, what would he be? I, he'd be, <laughs> I, I feel like he wouldn't wear a shirt, but he would wear the pants. See, I thought he'd wear the pants, the shirt, but not the pants. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I just thought it'd be funny. Was he nude in that movie? Yeah. yeah he was, wasn't yeah. he? He's I think he would around. be a good member until like they got to a planet or until he came across a crew member that had a child and then he would lose it. And that would be like the episode where he's trying to control his urges because he, because they need him and he's friends with these guys. He needs to get to a planet of just babies or like they're evacuating a planet and the only thing they can save are all the babies in like the hospital. And they're like, come on, no. <laughs> and he starts eating babies. I didn't even say <laughs> that he fights his urge at the last moment, thanks to something another cast member told him in the story earlier about you're not a monster anymore. You don't have to. You be are who you choose you were, to be. Exactly. And then that's what snaps him out of his, his like hunger. Mufasa comes out of the clouds. Remember who you are. <laughs> and then there's, there's a shot where it's just light. And you're like, oh my God. Did he make it back? Is he going to... And it's just him with an arm full of babies coming through. He didn't need a single one. And they're like, yes! And it's like the happy moment in that episode of Star Trek Discovery. (laughs) So it (coughs) never happened. He got over his baby eating habits. (laughs) So what does he eat? If they really wanted to give audiences nerd boners, at some point within the next 10 years, when inevitably you see... The Justice League work with the Green Lantern Corps. They need to show us on the big screen Green Lantern Batman. However briefly, just like in the comics. It's it's Yellow Lantern Batman. You can show us Yellow Lantern Batman too. Mm. Both of them work. Mm. (laughs) Batman doesn't (laughs) care. We will accept both. He's a good every color lantern. It doesn't matter what ring you give him. Could he be a pink lantern? Yes. Do you see how many women he's loved over the years? (laughs) Of course you can give him the He's only loved Catwoman. (laughs) No, he's loved... It's not... It's... It's not like a sex lantern color. Okay, well, how many women have loved him? How many women and men have loved Batman? <laughs> like lots of them. There you go. He can. He would absorb their love, and he okay. would use that as. A, he can be any fucking he color. Could, he could just be a pink lantern off Superman's love alone. Oh yeah, that would power him. Like, <laughs> like the is that sun. his battery? <laughs> <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Due to reactions. To David's interview, he has since offered an additional statement. This guy should just shut up. No, this is them like, this is what you're going to fucking say. Oh, okay. And you're not going to say anything outside of the script. These are the only words that you can say. 
There's like a red dot around his head, like, <laughs> if it's shaped in Mickey ears. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Hidden Mickey, we found it. <laughs> the golden years of Gold Bloom. There you go. There you go. Our Gold Bloom Prime. Could he be a Transformer, too? He's filling our quota. Optimus Prime is gone, right? Can we have Gold Bloom Prime? <laughs> we uh, are here to fight you <laughs> and save the human race. Move uh, over, Megatron. <laughs> <laughs> I want the little robot face to look like him with the yes. little hair. <laughs> what kind of car would he be? Can he be the Jeep from Jurassic Park? <laughs> there you go. He's the fucking Jeep from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a, a another transformable you know how some of them can fly as well it would turn into the ship from independence day yes please somebody make this movie true like it, it bothers me because that character served no other purpose except to save them from things so the weaker you, writing right uh, you didn't have a build up with him he saves yondu because they killed all my friends <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was his whole reasoning for setting him free when he's the one who kind of started the whole mutiny anyway. That was a perfect impression of that, that guy, by the way. The... That's exactly what we did not clip that by the, from the movie, everyone. <laughs> Bro cats. That was Kelly herself. Should... Uh, what you didn't know is I played him. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. There's a bunch of things you could do with this. You could have Laura Croft Balls Raider. <laughs> uh, you could have Balls Effect or Mass Balls. <laughs> mass Balls. <laughs> uh, Kingdom Balls. Kingdom Balls is Kingdom of Balls. Thank you. No, no. Kingdom of Balls is even better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you could have Harvest Balls. <laughs> And he would have go, do you know who I am? And I would have been like, I don't give a fuck who you are. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> here gives a fuck who you are. He should have gotten real close to his face and said, you're fucking nobody. <laughs> you're no one. You're absolutely nobody. <laughs> nobody. And his little dick would have gone, meow. <laughs> <laughs> it disappeared out of existence. <laughs> 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 Whatever he had left, I just obliterated with that. <laughs> My characters were better than yours, and they weren't overly sexualized. Your characters didn't wear a bra for most of the movies. Okay, <laughs> so you see nipples hanging out every... I mean, they weren't hanging out, but anyway, his characters didn't wear a bra, and they had a major fight scene in their panties. I don't remember that in Terminator. <laughs> no, it's an alien. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I just pictured Sarah Connor <laughs> shooting a Terminator who was also wearing panties. It's a skeleton body, but he's wearing panties. I'm like, that happened? <laughs> now, if they had Arnold Schwarzenegger in some panties. <laughs> I, I would buy it. Like, I'd believe that because he did that, all that fucking muscle, all those fucking muscle shows and shit. But I don't know why I went straight to a skeletal of a Terminator. <laughs> panties never tight enough for that skeletal. No buns. <laughs> No buns, Stop, no dick. Stop, I pulled a stomach muscle. I can't <laughs> laugh at her. Ow. Ow. <laughs> the suffering for the podcast. The suffering for your giant eight-pound child. <laughs> Uh, someone some put out a meme, I'm sure, of, of Pikachu, and that became the thing. Look at that Charizard over there. <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Make it happen. <laughs> Hashtag Conroy for Pikachu. <laughs> Hashtag Pika Conroy. And then, and then some woman could have come out about Tommy. And that would have and, made and it me been, I wouldn't believe them, Kelly, because I like Tommy. So, okay. no, he would never right. do that. All right. If anything, he would have aimed at her belly button anyway. So it's not. Like... <laughs> and that's our show. <laughs> <laughs> I killed you with that one. <laughs> I'm still fighting the sickness. <laughs> oh, professional. <laughs> I'm 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 kind of sad that we didn't get dressed up for these. We did. We they, did. They, they can't see us. We got dressed up. <laughs> oh man, look at my fancy dress. I've got. It's like in the cartoons. I have that fucking thing, the white thing that goes boom in the cartoons. Yeah, that flips up. 
I never knew what the hell that was. I don't know if that was like a forties thing. It's a cummerbund. I like, think I've never heard of a fucking cum. I'm brown, <laughs> Kelly. Like there's no cummerbunds. <laughs> What's a fucking cummerbund? <laughs> Like, do you guys get delivered on those fucking things? Is that something that white people do? Like, I, how am I... You looked at me as if I was crazy for not knowing what a cummerbund was. The Avengers director and Justice League co-director, Joseph Whedon, has left the Warner Brothers Batgirl live-action film. <laughs> Joey Wheaton's gone, 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 and gone. Get his fucking ass. That fucking... F- <laughs> <laughs> You all can't see this, but he's dancing like he did when he was drunk on the cruise ship. Boom, boom. Yes! It's the greatest. Our closet turned into a music festival. I don't know. There was the actual fireworks, guys. 